It's actually how you as parents interact with them. Yes. That's what really counts. Kate Middleton's personal brand is all about defining a royal idea of modern motherhood. Kate's royal mum brand juggles aspiration and relatability, mirroring the impossible expectations put on all working moms today. To be perfectly put together and professionally successful, while also feeling normal, down to earth, and never too busy to put the kids first. The Duchess has shown she can expertly handle toddler tantrums. Our collective rhetoric has largely moved past the idea of women having it all, but the Duchess of Cambridge embodies how modern moms are still expected to do it all. We've watched in awe as she performs her royal duties and charity work, all while raising a family. Of course, most mothers doing all this don't get the help of a team like Kate's, but we can see how the do-it-all Duchess reflects broader mom trends. How women are having babies later when their careers are potentially more established. How the work and the mom parts of the working mom identity are becoming more integrated than ever, and how parental load is at least getting more talked about. It is right to talk about motherhood as a wonderful thing, but we also need to talk about its stresses and strains. Kate's motherhood brand is also part of how the monarchy is attempting to update itself for the 21st century. Embodying a traditionalism that's simultaneously accessible and up-to-date, Kate appears to both appeal to a conservative idea of the English mum and align with more contemporary conversations and sensibilities. Becoming a mother has been such a rewarding and wonderful experience. However, at times it's also been a huge challenge. Here's our take on Kate Middleton's blueprint for the modern do-it-all mom and how she's using her motherhood brand to bring people back to the royal family. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service that takes the guesswork out of choosing what to watch next. Every day, Mubi premieres a new film, each one thoughtfully hand-picked. Their team of curators is dedicated to introducing you to the best of cinema and exclusive gems you can't find anywhere else. Right now, Mubi is offering our viewers 30 days free. Click the link in the description below to start streaming now. When Kate Middleton first began to come on the scene as a potential future princess, her beauty and Cinderella story captured the public imagination. But the discussion around her character wasn't always flattering. She was dubbed both Weighty Katie and Lazy Katie, as the press weaponized her and William's slow courtship against her, and publicized the Queen's concerns that Kate was work-shy. Middleton has been criticized for her failure to get a real job. Despite being a rich, privileged St. Andrews graduate, Kate was also diminished for her so-called middle-class background and dubbed a social climber who'd long plotted to infiltrate the monarchy. But it turns out she's had her eyes set on William for quite some time. But since those early days, Kate's narrative has shifted in two key ways. Over the last few years, as Meghan Markle has been cast as a disruptor and agent of change challenging the royal family, Kate came to be seen as an insider and, to some, a symbol of the reassuring status quo. Meanwhile, with the birth of Prince George in 2013, followed by Charlotte in 2015 and Louis in 2018, Kate's public identity began to solidify around her as a mother. I think the science also has shown how important relationships are and safe and nurturing environments are for children, particularly under five. The Duchess's branding as a mother has one goal above all else, and that's to make her relatable. There is no rule book, no right or wrong. You just have to make it up and do the very best you can to care for your family. Whereas royal motherhood was once hidden behind closed doors, Kate's parenting is done in full view of the public. She went on Giovanna Fletcher's Happy Mom, Happy Baby podcast in 2020, choosing to give a candid interview to an independent podcast rather than a royal correspondent. Do you struggle with mum guilt for having the yes, juggle? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think anyone who does one as a mother is actually lying. Even the COVID-19 pandemic has helped cement this idea of Kate Middleton as just another mum by giving her the opportunity to talk about how she's had to manage homeschooling during lockdown. How do you rate your maths ability after several months of homeschooling? That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm obviously right at the bottom. Explain social distancing. Louis doesn't understand social distancing. So he goes out and like wanting to cuddle everything and particularly any babies younger than him. And make the same adjustments we've all dealt with. I've become a hairdresser this lockdown, uh, much to um, 
my children's horror. She's added to her relatability factor through the fact that pictures released of the royal kids are mostly candid shots she's taken herself, with all of the family photos on the Duke and Duchess's official Instagram being credited to Kate. Her favorite subjects have always been her three children. Relatable mom Kate counters the scrutiny facing the royal family for a number of highly unlikable stories, like the allegations around Prince Andrew's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, the report that the royal family banned ethnic minorities from working in office roles, and the accusations of racism leveled against the family in Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Oprah interview. This celebration of Kate as a mother also reverses less cozy narratives about past parenting within the royal family. Prince Harry caused shockwaves when he criticized how he was parented by Prince Charles. He used to say to both William and I, well, it was like that for me, so it's gonna be like that for you. That doesn't make sense and also how Charles's cold parenting style was a manifestation of how he was parented by the Queen and Prince Philip. I'm gonna make sure that I break that cycle. The Crown depicts how Prince Charles's upbringing was defined mostly by suffering, which in turn was a continuation of what Prince Philip had to endure as a young person. The world needs saviors. A generation of remarkable young men who have put fury behind them, who embrace the pain in their struggle. Kate's early years campaign actually addresses these ideas of generational trauma. I've seen that experiences such as homelessness, addiction, and poor mental health are often grounded in a difficult childhood. While her aura as a warm, present mother counters critical perceptions of the monarchy as cold or out of touch. Kate's brand as a modern working mom is a portrait of someone who is able to not just balance, but also integrate her two roles as a mother and a working senior royal. In order to do it all, the contemporary working mom is increasingly blending and overlapping her professional and personal lives. And even while Kate is highly visible in non-motherhood related projects like the Hold Still campaign, she's also publicly seen doing ordinary mom things like taking her kids to school as a family. First day. Very or talking about how she and William unwind as a couple at the end of the night. We're a bit box heady, you know, when we get times in the evenings Once to watch the films. Bad. Not very long ago, working moms felt more pressure to hide all evidence of their family life in their professional sphere, while women in the public eye might have kept their mom identity out of the spotlight. But today, more than ever, women are owning and talking about doing both. Similarly, motherhood for both royals and non-royals gone by was often assumed to involve some trade-offs. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were famously absent parents, while Princess Diana was criticized for doting on her children at the expense of her royal duties. The baby was never intended to be part of the trip. I always made it perfectly clear. No baby, no me. But Kate's brand is about flawlessly juggling both work and parenting as one unified identity. Of course, despite Kate being framed as relatable, in actuality, this flawless standard is unattainable to most women without access to the same privileges, like having a stylist to dress you hours after you've given birth. Kate wore a red Jenny Packham dress. She wore the same British designer for the royal debuts of Prince George in 2013 and Princess Charlotte nearly two years later. Discussions of Kate's parenting style often glide over the fact that her family has had a live-in nanny from the prestigious Norland College since Prince George was a baby, and that Kate has a personal assistant and stylist, Natasha Archer, who's been described as her right-hand woman. A royal source said, if you look at the people around her, it's a tight team. They make it possible for Kate to juggle everything. Even her openness to accepting help is spun as positive. We need people around us. The more people you have around your children who are safe and loving and caring, mm. the better. Which fails to acknowledge that many mothers don't really have the option to accept quite so much help. As challenging as modern motherhood is, though, Abby League writes that that many women are able to strike a better balance between parenting and work success thanks to a number of factors, including the fact that the average age of first-time moms is at an all-time high, and the wealth of accessible expert parenting resources from online communities, YouTube videos, and mommy bloggers. Baby 101, how to do every basic baby thing. We want to make your life easier. Kate reflects both of these trends, having had Prince George at the age of 31, and also reportedly having secret accounts on mom's forums Mumsnet and Baby Center with a royal source saying she mainly posts questions about issues she and Prince William disagree on, like watching cartoons before bed. It's also significant that like other working moms today, Kate is honest and open about the universal stresses of parenting in a way that was once unheard of. There has never been a more important time to talk about parental well-being and mental health too. This is a hugely challenging time for us all. 
so please look after yourself too. Sociologist Arlene Daniels originated the concept of invisible labor to describe the work that is devalued for it is either unpaid or limited by the demands of the unpaid work in the home and is mostly performed by women. Even though 46% of households now in the United States have dual working parents, the women always have this invisible burden. Marissa Lascala writes that to take off some of the invisible burden, you have to make it visible. So by using her platform simply to talk about that burden, Kate is contributing to the reckoning in modern motherhood, where we're at last admitting that these unspoken expectations on women are unsustainable. Of course, there's a key thing that sets Kate's motherhood apart from that of other moms and even that of other royals like Meghan Markle and Zara Tyndall, the line of succession. There's an expectation of seeing George grow up because he's the boy that one day will be king. Because Kate is the mother of Prince George, third in line to the UK throne, there's greater scrutiny on the symbolism of Kate's parenting and how it fits into royal tradition or defines the British identity for our era. Kate and William's official residence of Anmer Hall in Norfolk rather than in London plays into showing that the two are, as one royal source put it, country folk at heart. Do your three children love being outside? They do love it. <laughs> Sometimes when it's chucking it down <laughs> and it's freezing cold and I'm dragging them out, they would probably rather be staying inside, but I think it's so important. Many of Kate's photographs show her family spending time outdoors, which helps connect them to the country they sit at the head of. The Duchess's Back to Nature garden was displayed at the Chelsea Flower Show, and her whole family were able to enjoy it. Relishing the countryside is also a royal family trademark, playing into a traditionally posh Englishness. The Crown dramatizes how when the working class raised Margaret Thatcher visits the Queen at the Royal Scottish Holiday Home Balmoral Castle, Thatcher is wholly unprepared for how casual and dressed down everything is. I couldn't help noticing, ma'am, you didn't bring any outdoor shoes. That's right. Outside of that context, it's worth considering how emphasizing outdoor time for kids might influence other non-royal families. A 2018 National Trust study in the UK found that children spend half as much time playing outside as their parents' generation, partly due to competition from technology and a lack of adequate rural areas. There's a growing concern that this is having negative health consequences, and Kate's family's practices are a reminder to all of us that a connection to nature makes for stronger, healthier adults. It's such a great safe environment for kids to learn. They don't realize they're learning. Meanwhile, however much some aspects of Kate's public relations connect to modern leaning mothers, there's also a more traditional maternal figure being fostered. With one royal source telling people that she's no pushover, the children get told off if they act up. Undoubtedly, those who dislike the degree to which Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have broken with royal tradition find Kate appealing for how she seems to preserve it. But Kate has shown that even with the world's cameras watching, she's a kind, calm, and patient mum. At a time when the very concept of maternal instinct is being questioned, Kate's relationship with her own children and effervescent displays with others reassert a more old-fashioned notion that motherhood is on some level innate. And the public portrait of Kate as a strong, confident working mom is framed within a portrait of a solid nuclear family unit. These are my children and this is my this image marks a conscious shift in the royal family brand from its recent history of family units in disarray, with both Prince Charles's marriage to Diana and Prince Andrew's marriage to Fergie ending in divorces, and Diana and Fergie at times overshadowing their respective husbands and the royal family itself. Everybody always said when we were in the car, oh, we're on the wrong side. We want to see her, we don't want to see him. As much as Diana's maternal warmth has been widely praised and fondly remembered by her sons. That uh, sort of childish, fun element really came out when she was spending time with us. There was an impression that her passionate devotion to her role as a mother could sometimes upset royal protocol, or that coverage of her as a mother alone with the kids could inadvertently emphasize her and Charles's split. By comparison, Kate's professional mom brand isn't just there to show that she's working, but that the whole family is working too. The style of parenting Kate and William put out there also contains an element of self-reliance, which is again both traditionally British and a departure from modern parenting 
styles, like helicopter parenting, where parents can be over-controlling, over-protecting, and over-perfecting. Or snowplow parenting, described as an even more extreme version of helicopter parenting, where parents preemptively clear all potential obstacles from their children's path. The minute we said no dodgeball, we had a problem. The minute every kid got an award, no matter what, yeah. we had a problem. But it feels like Kate and William's children are being pushed into independence and responsibility at a young age, already taking on some royal duties without the presence of their parents. Hello, David Attenborough. What animal do you think will become extinct next? Well, let's hope there won't be any. Tina Godoyne argues that the ascendancy of Kate Middleton is partly down to her mother, Carol Middleton, being a white middle-class version of the Tiger Mother, a term coined in 2011 by Amy Chua for parenting that prioritizes achievement, discipline, and boundaries, as well as familial closeness. Godoyne writes, think of the upper Middleton mother as Churchill, standing beside a big social map and slowly but methodically shunting her children into the right places at the right time. Carol Middleton, Kate's mom, has really been behind behind the royal romance from the very beginning. She's the person who actually convinced Kate to go to a St. Andrews University. She was going to go to Edinburgh University. In a sense, Kate's parenting style is much like her overall role within the royal family. She's someone who can embody traditions, but who is also in touch with modernity and who feels connected to the general public in a way that royals themselves perhaps never can be. My parents were hugely dedicated. I really appreciate now as a parent how much they sacrificed for us. Given Prince William's extreme privilege from birth, we may never fully believe that he understands his average subject, but Kate is just that one step down from him and so appears to embody more relatable British values, which she can pass down to the next generation of royals. It's really to try and encourage families to spend quality time together outside and in nature to really focus on you know, the simple things in life. As the future Queen of England and the mother of the future King, Kate is illustrating how the monarchy plans to update itself, to remain influential while holding on to its essence. William and Kate in particular, I think, recognize that they have to remain relevant. The monarchy has to remain relevant to the next generation. Key to Kate's mom brand is her understanding that royals have to connect with their subjects with unprecedented directness. So they go on podcasts and they appear to run their own Instagram channel, and they parent the royal children in full view, allowing us to invest in those future rulers from the moment they come home from the hospital. This is a photograph of my family. This is The Take on your favorite movie shows and culture. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. Please subscribe and never miss a take. Thanks again to Mubi for sponsoring today's video. One film I absolutely love on Mubi this month is Ron. Akira Kurosawa's masterpiece reimagines Shakespeare's tragedy King Lear and sets it against a samurai backdrop. It's an epic tale that no movie lover should miss. If you're anything like me, these days you may be totally uninspired and stuck when it comes to figuring out what to watch next. Subscribing to Mubi completely fixes that. Their team of curators handpicks every film they show, so there's always something new to discover. They seriously love movies as much as we do, so their recommendations are always top notch. As a special gift to our viewers, Mubi is offering 30 days free, so click the link in the description below to start streaming now.